Checking one. Chicken one, I was going to say that time. Check one, two, and three. You know, one, two, and three are missing. That's right. That's fact. I'm not kidding you. I wouldn't lie. Hang on, we're down to the countdown. Let's see if I make some strange noises here. Pretty sure I got it at night. And looking pretty good for the last. Starting soon. And I've already been streaming for how long? Starting soon. I hit streaming. 30 seconds on the clock. And I'm still never showed up here, so they got a quick delay on it. Yeah? Just give us a second, folks. If you don't know what's going on, we're trying to make sure the stream is going. And I don't see it. And whatever. I'll just keep talking because that's yes, Google. Google doesn't like us. I know I hit the stream. I know I got starting. I know I was doing the countdown. I know the timer was working. And there's no video showing. There I am. Yeah, I'm rocking. Hi, folks. There you go. See, I told you if you stuck with me for 90 days, I would work the audio out, didn't I? <laughs> so, never change the setting ever again. Ever. Under any circumstances. I'll be in a new studio next week. That should be fun. Should be interesting. And a couple of weeks after that, um, we'll be in second gear. Third. Hi, Zoe. And a week after that, we'll be in third gear. No wasting time around here. We don't need no hill to go down to get started, okay? We're we're ready to go up the hills at this stage. And I've already bring the comment out. <laughs> so that setting is not the high quality setting. Thanks, Sergeant. Marcus, hi nuts for art. Hey buddy. And Penny and Lori. I keep forgetting to say hi to Lori Ketzer, because Lori posts videos all the time. She's working. Like Stacy, uh, two Stacys, like Anderson, and. Oh, jeez, don't tell me I can't even remember names tonight. Fish Fan. Hi, Tracy. Ketzer, again, Mr. Hemi. I say hi to everybody tonight, because this is the last night that. Because I realize now I got the settings finally figured out after 90 days. Well, that's not true because I got a new had to get a new system, but we got a pretty good handle on her now, and we know we can get away with this setting anyway. And it's okay. It's not the high quality setting, blah, whatever. I don't care anymore because this is as good as it's ever gonna get until I get into the new spot, and the new spot's got the unlimited uh, bandwidth, and so it's double uh, the uh, high speeds as this one. And so, yeah, it'll be good, right? It's lots of big fireplace, lots of stone around us. So it should be really cool. And it'll be earlier hours, right? And um, more powerful computers and stuff. Um, so that's all looking good. Because we're swinging. We're swinging. We're playing in mopped uh, Tepco guy in the head. Right, you know, you drive along with a mop and you look for a Tepco guy, a wet mop, and when he sees him, you swing the mop out there and you haul him by the head and you whip him around. Sounds like fun to me. Tell you what, mop the Tepco. <laughs> this is only satire, folks. They won't let me drive in Japan and carry a mop. There's a law or ordinance against it, I think. I'm looking for, I got so much gathered up in the last couple of days. My goodness, some naughty people on the planet. But uh, hi, Sylvia, Kate, Eric, uh, Blandy, Mick, Mike, Char, Snoodup, DC, Maya, 2012, Pasha, Ash, your first time here. Dude, Diver Dude, Ken, yes, Albert, Stephen, Tracy, Starlight, Angela, Aviator, Unseen. Ooh, uh, Joyce, say hi, and like, let me put this down for a second, 
And Troy, by the way, folks, fought. Troy is a really talented musician. And just to make sure everybody gets, because I gave him a hard time to one day, unfortunately. It wasn't a hard time, but I always feel bad when I say something to somebody. Uh, but Troy's a little different. Not in a bad way now, but he's just a little different in the sense of some musicians out there, they're extremely talented and they're very humbled. Some musicians out there are extremely talented and they're very boisterous. Some musicians are very talented and they're very enthusiastic. Right? That would be Troy. And a very talented person. We'll steal his music later for some cool videos and I can find something cool enough to go with that music. I just don't want to think people I'm always a dick. Usually, but not all the time. I'll get to it. Um, I went to the Google Plus today. Because they're dicks too. And uh, they wanted... They wanted to uh, help people tag you in photos and videos. I just want to touch up on that for a second. When you turn on Find My Face, Google Plus can prompt people, you know, to tag your face when it appears in photos and videos. Like, for me, I don't care, but that's, that's crazy that Google's doing that. Turn on, my, turn on Find My Face. I got to make a video about that one, but anyway. Let's get everybody on track. We've been rolling along for a few minutes. Yeah, you'll use the mop standing foot. <laughs> we can switch places, you know. Six minutes and 30 seconds, and I just... Hi, Ed. Hey, uh, and another quick note for everybody. Uh, James was here last night. And he all gave him a real proper going over. But um, I was thinking he might be a robot. It's like... Why would a PR firm come in and spam a video where the audio was friggin' shitty? Nobody was going to hang around and watch that one. Except for some really diehards and unbelievably good souls. Uh, and it's unfortunate. I mean, it's a fantastic video last night. That's what that was all about. Uh, probably That was my proudest video. And when I watched it, listened to the audio, I was horrified. Just literally, I was just heartbroken. Honest to goodness. I just sat here and I just like, Unbelievable. Because I'm going to have to do that video over again. And that's okay. I'll be much more articulate this time. So let's get everybody on the same page. And uh, let me say it like this. If you're new to this and you're still trying to work your way through it and you're arguing with people and you're fighting with people, that's no fun, right? That takes, um, takes a lot of energy out of people. And so you gotta have, you gotta stick to just the narratives. And so here's some of the narratives that I, I, you hear me repeating all the time. I hope if you listen a bit, and it, if you're new, rather, uh, so I'll just go off on the normal. When you hear the words iodine 131, and uh, you gotta think that it converts to iodine 132 right away, and that goes into your thyroid uh, nine times quicker. That's the simplest, quickest way to look at it. And so they never mention iodine-132, but they always mention iodine-31. So you can look up iodine-131 and how it come across everybody's countries. And then, I want you, then you have to take into consideration that it turns radioactively decays into iodine-132 quite quickly, say seven days or whatever. Well, once again, if iodine-131 is scary, what about the iodine-132 that that iodine-131 becomes? And so media doesn't bother mentioning that, how that's uptake nine times more effectively. But also, for every three iodine 131s, which is the popular one you hear in the media and everybody's familiar with, that only they say you only got a shelf life of seven days, for every three of those that are produced in the fission, then one iodine 129 is produced, and that's got a half-life of 15 million years, and all half-lives are multiples of 10. Because they decay into another one, to another one, to another one, and then that half decays, and that half that's left over decays, and so it's, you know, like it's time ten of the original isotope, and then the next isotope does the same thing, where it half decays, and then half of that decays, and then that quarter decays, right, into an eighth, and then into a sixteenth. So the residual of the night of the original isotopes lasts for a very long time. When you look at it that way, it's not cut and dry like seven days. Even though you go out and you can find that kind of rhetoric everywhere, 
And if you go look up the truth, you'll find out what I'm saying is true and accurate. But you can't have any of them because they're all produced. Iodine's a data of uranium. And so uranium-234 and 235 got a 4.5 billion year half-life. And you can't have, when iodine shows up, it's precipitative of all the other isotopes showing up, like the plutoniums. And when you hear cesium-137, which is another very popular one, you can't have cesium without 30 times more strontium-90, say. Other strontiums too, but strontium-90 is a well-known one, and it goes into your muscles and your bones right away. And the cesium is in, uh, gets into, sequestered into your organs, into your lungs. Um, and so that's a good way, I think, to uh, enlighten somebody. And say, okay, well, here's 131. They say, well, it's got a seven-day half-life. And you say, but you can't have it 132. Or every three, you can't have it without eight, 129, which got a 15 million year half-life. And that ain't going anywhere. So if iodine showed up in those communities, which they did, and we covered extensively, like California had 20 million becquerels, disintegrations of iodine 131, in a liter of a raindrop. California had 40 million becquerels of iodine-131 in their kelp forest. So you got it coming out of the rain at 20 million becquerels per liter, which you can drink. That will kill you. But it's okay for your kids to walk to school in that rain. Uh, and, of course, you can't have it without the uranium and the plutonium. So if the iodine showed up at all, particularly in those large numbers, all the other ones had to show up in those large numbers. And so we have definitive, that's definitive proof beyond any shadows of a doubt that California, which got the brunt of it, that doesn't mean that's the rest of the country wasn't. You were breeding 1,500. There was 1,500 buckyballs, radioactive atoms, in a cubic meter of ear. Um, now that was a high number, but it was lower in numbers, but that's sustained over a long period of time. And so that's a wake, uh, nuclear waste site, California. That's the better way to look at it. Because the iodines, the uraniums, the plutoniums are not going anywhere for thousands and thousands of years. Yeah, the iodine might. And, but I mean, so... The iodine-131 at 20 million becquels per liter, or 40 million becquels disintegrations per second every second, is not going to go anywhere for uh, millions of years, certainly tens of thousands for plutoniums. But it depends, you know, and then the iodine is 15 million years for the 129. And so for every liter, there's 5 million becquels, 5 million becquels, 5 million becquels. And the government insists that it's not an issue because, uh, like the comments were saying, California is the eighth biggest economy on the planet and they don't want to lose their money, but they can't hang on to it much longer. And think about the rain at 8 million becquels that when the typhoons were sweeping over Japan, if it was that much in California, what was it like when those typhoons went over Japan and re-liberated these isotopes, these buckyballs, and just peer review academic studies down below about it. So you got to realize that when that went over to the Philippines and, and destroyed the Philippines at 195 mile an hour sustained winds, that year also, that rain, that moisture, that whole country now is radio polluted. But the Geiger counters are for low background radiation, it's not for these high counts. And you have to get it calibrated specifically, and you have to spend good money to have a quality one. It really truly is like that, and you have to know what you're doing. Or you can certainly get some bad readings, or you can get really low readings when it's really dangerous. Uh, if you're not familiar with how to use it and how to, per, you know, these things are not just like a battery, like a flashlight where you turn it on and off. It's not simple at all to use it properly. And it's quite dangerous to be out hunting for this stuff, but it's... It's necessary. It, you know, if you can calibrate your cal your Geiger counter for isotopes itself, the popular ones, like the 131, and you're finding that, that means it came from a recent fission, right? That had to come from the meltdowns at Fukushima. 
And the reason those numbers are so high, in particular, was that Unit 3 was MOX fuel. And that's 2 million times worse. High missing sky, 2 million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. So if you look at Chernobyl, it's a 30% meltdown. And it was only one third the size of the reactors at Fukushima. And so one third versus 2 million is 18 million times worse. And so these were atomized and aerosoled and sent up into the jet streams. And it was just a, like a quick introduction because I rambled for the first six or seven minutes. <laughs> what else is new? Uh, but also, you can't have that going into your surrounding areas and just it magically can disappear. It can't work that way. And of course, 50 Beckwells will damage your organs. It will cause lesions in your organs, permanent permanent lesions in your organs. And so what's it going to do to a child? And children like to hang out on the ground. Your pets like to go outdoors. And so the, the government that, you know, as a sign of good faith, doesn't even offer up iodine, let alone DCA uh, minerals, which are extremely effective at killing cancer. And there's a peer review study down below about that. But the government has engineered all the nutrition out of the food. And so if they were to engineer the nutrition back into the food, give everybody DCA pills in California, at least that would be a sign of good faith. If they were to test and recognize it. But I got folders and folders on California nuclear fallout that is sustained. That people were living for up to a year in very sustained hot particles. Like I say once again, 1,500 radioactive atoms per cubic meter of air in California verified. And then you had a minimum of 10 buckyballs a day being ingested up in Seattle, and they had the same buckyballs show up down towards the East Coast. And so you can't get away from the fact that there's all these models out there. Even though Wiley, Springer, and Elsevier, like uh, Elsevier has 3,900 peer review studies that you paid for locked away and so you don't know nothing about those studies you don't have a clue about that a lot of these are pro-nuclear so they're mongled you know what I mean they're they're um, they're stacked peer review studies but some of them are probably really good certainly lots of them are informative shows you they were looking shows you they were thinking or why else would you do 3900 studies about it just at Elsevier's little locker room and then you got Springer and Wiley, Elsevier Springer and Wiley own 20,000 of the most prestigious academic publishing houses on the planet, and they get the copyrights to all your uh, university's uh, efforts, all their studies. And, and other institutions will peer review those studies, and Elsevier gets that done for free. Wiley gets that done for free. Springer gets that done for free. And nobody knows why. Nobody knows how that happened or how that's possible. But we can't get access to these studies. But the studies we get are, the most people here are, you know, who don't know any better are hearing it from Fox or they're hearing it from CNN, you know, or they're hearing it from just this cable uh, opinionated opinions and uh, known lobbyists for the industry. And by the way, all nuclear plants are private. Uh, funded. You can't get insurance on these things. And so they're privately funded. That's so important. Uh, so we can kind of identify people now when we think about it that way because it's private funding for all these nuclear plants. And who the hell would be doing that? Why are people doing that? Because they've been making power for 50 years and they don't need all these extra isotopes that they're creating, these weaponized MOX fuel uh, spontaneous isotopes that they're creating. These are mathematical equations. They got nothing to do with making power the Fukushima Daiichi was a military industrial complex first, and its byproduct was because you're using nuclear power as a million gallons a minute, making all the steam, they sold energy. And they're disguised as an energy company. They're as far as an energy company as you can get. Now, there's uh, credible reports that the military had bunkers dung out on that site where they were creating some really most likely uh, directed energy weapons with some exotic isotopes that probably didn't have a long shelf life and that's why it was all done on that site. 
And who knows, 100%. But I know there's a lot going on about that. You can't make these directed energy weapons, these laser beams, without isotopes. That's how they're doing it. And so they need to blow the planet. I mean, they got 70 years of nuclear power, and they haven't got the kinks out of it yet. I mean, it's the most ridiculous thing you can imagine. But what Japan is doing is they're not letting anybody in there to help them. And Japan's people needs to take back their countries. It wouldn't take long to get rid of what's in your way down there. I mean, they got them blocked from the internet. They got them blocked uh, since October 25th, 2013, since a 7.5 earthquake struck off Fukushima. And we got no pictures, no information. We got some serious propaganda, but we never got any confirmation from the entire country because they locked it down. And it's been locked down ever since. And that's quite frightening that these people are imprisoned, but yet they can take their country back any time they want. They certainly have that ability. There's a thousand to one. It wouldn't take them long. And that culture, uh, it's, it reminds me now when I think about Japan uh, because there's so much pollution through that entire country. Schoolyards, after being decontaminated, as if you can do that, uh, still a million becquels of cesium-137 per square meter where the children are playing in the playgrounds. Uh, and so we've covered so much, a thousand headlines in the, you know, the last 90 days plus. And when you put it all together finally and get the audio working, you come to this conclusion that uh, Japan is literally at this stage the people themselves, like the dolphins, you ever see the water where it's all bleeding and, uh, and they're killing all the dolphins and everything is just chaos. That's what it reminds me of because the entire country is being destroyed by the very people that they uh, put their fate into and they know it. They know that. This is not an illusion. This is something they actually know. And the government, uh, Abe in particular, is so tyrannical, he's retroactively trying to cover up everything they've been doing. I mean, realize that the Japanese government, in the first 52 days, created over uh, 5,000 uh, models of the aerosol, the dispersion over Japan and Tokyo and all these surrounding countries. And remember, the, the winds don't blow towards to the, Tokyo, they blow the other way. Right, so they're always trying to give you numbers from Tokyo, but Tokyo's got numbers all over the place of 300,000 becquels per square meter. All over Tokyo, 450 kilometers away. They got numbers like that 1,200 kilometers away, right up to the east and the west, rather. And so we don't know what happened east. We don't hear those numbers very much, but I've seen some of the numbers like 26 million becquels per square meter. It's astonishing that we don't hear much about the east side of Fukushima's prefectures. Uh, these people are, are, you know, in a very dangerous place because they're downwinders of the most dangerous thing on the planet. And so J Japan at this stage is, well, everybody understands that. Japan is finished. Yeah, you can't eat any seafood. Hi, who am you? I say hi to a few, few people. Uh, Fred... Is, is obviously far over their heads. Is it, there's something else going on there. It, this is about the nuclear industry. Hi, Annie Beck. The nuclear industry will murder all of us to keep the nuclear power alive because that's the only way they're ever going to get off the planet. That's the only way they're going to the space travel. And it appears that they've made a commitment now uh, because you can't turn it off and they're not trying. They're not going to deal with it. They're not going to take all the institutions on this planet and put them to work on it which is what's necessary. We can't have 18 million Chernobyls going off at the one time, which is what we got in Fukushima. Uh, it's just, it's endless because we won't even try to deal with it. Japan won't let anybody else even go look at it. Uh, and so, you know, I have no issues with China going and dropping a nuke on their head at Fukushima. At least get rid of them. Don't let them end us. You know, don't let them... Uh, we can't do that, unfortunately. we got to stay on that site. And what they're doing is they're kidnapping the most vulnerable of society and bringing them to that site and doing horrible things to them. And these people uh, have no idea. They're thrown away like trash. And so that's enough. 
I, you know, like you, I understand that this uh, is not desperate anymore. This is uh, maniacal. This is beyond Dr. Evil stuff. You can't dream this stuff up that there's humans on the planet who will go out and get homeless and bring them in there and murder them. Think of the cases of people that went out there and gave a whole bunch of people AIDS. Those people never died right away, but those people were thrown in jail when they were caught because those people will die in the future, a lot of them. Where any kind of disease is like that where they're spread and it's fatal, that's outright murder. So that's what Japan is doing to the entire planet. And we really need the Japanese people. Whether we hire a plane and they go up and paint in the sky over Tokyo, I don't know. Whether we get the holograms and we, you know, we, uh, I'm not going to say this stuff because I haven't been swearing tonight. So I've been a good little boy tonight. And, hi Pauline, Mama Knox, hi, honey. I'm just passing through, David. Albert, sure. It's so brutal. You know, my, my my best friend here has got muscle farms out here for the last 25 years. And he's heartbroken. Um, you know, when you got a commitment like that on the ocean, you know you can't deny, ultimately, as much as you try, when you look at all the information, you can't get away from the realities of it. It's pretty heartbreaking, just that part of it. But to me, of course, I look at all the victims and the, and the many victims that are coming and the many victims that have been created, and I, I keep trying to find a way that I can crack. I can crack, and I know what's going on now. You know, I'm getting much more understanding. You can send pictures. Yeah, Moya. Hi, Captain Rat. Well, I mean, that's the cover story, Captain Red, where they... Hi, Stacey Anderson. That's the... They say they're putting it in the tanks, but they're not. I just got so many headlines up and dumping it. That's a cover. I mean, it's like the the Building 4, you know, the last month or so that BBC and everybody was propagating out. Here's this perfect, beautiful interior shot where the reporters went in the building, right? The reporters went in the buildings, RT and uh, ABC and a bunch of them, BBC, got in suits and Geiger counters and got on the bus and had some spooky music and played it on TV. But that building doesn't exist. Whatever building they were in is not building four. And so all they are is just regurgitating what they were told. Uh, these, you know, I'm going to hunt all their names down here in the near future because the last couple of days I think about it a lot and do a video and get their clip and ask them what part of this building do they actually really think they were in? Were they blindfold, uh, you know, before they got there or something? What was going on? How can uh, they not ask questions? How can they not even employ? How remarkable they rebuilt all the facilities after massive detonations felt 25 kilometers away by people going to the cars who work for AP reported on it, the concussions of it. So... Why did the media push that out there? Why is Japan hiding everything if they got nothing to hide? And why is uh, Springer or Elsevier got 3,900 peer review studies about Fukushima if there's nothing going on? Why did the Japanese government create 5,000 models of dispersal if there was nothing going on? Why is there a million Beck Bulls at the playgrounds for children's schools? After decontamination, if there's nothing going on, why did they de decontaminate it if there's nothing going on? And then at 50 becquels per second is enough to damage your organs, an adult. And remember, children get a different dose than adults, right? Completely different dose. They're much smaller. They're getting the same dose the adults get. I've seen numbers of 7 out of 10 babies are deformed in certain areas of uh, Japan. And these, this was suppressed, even though these numbers had never been suppressed before. Yeah, um, hologram. There you go, Blandy. The real Knight Rider. What are we talking about pictures of Mars for? Operation Plowshare. Nuts for Arts, aliens. How do we get into this conversation, folks? Uh, 
Um, got me sidetracked now. Mars, aliens. I guess I'm missing the punchline somewhere along the way. So you got three nuclear meltdowns, complete 100% meltdowns of completely different fuel than what was at Chernobyl. We have that hemorrhaging directly into the ocean, unhinged from earthquakes on top of that and all the cracks along uh, that plant. There's 2,134 videos, pictures down below in the link from TEFCO. And that uh, there's 99 different downloads, and they're all marked about different spots of this plant. And these were taken by the Fukushima 50. And some of the quality is going to look really bad, but that's because of radiation and cameras, radiation and the pictures. Uh, but they're decent pictures. I mean, that's a peek into when everything was gone really bad. And it's an amazing collection. They're labeled uh, and a lot of really high quality. You can zoom way in, get amazing details. And so if you want to look at just one part of the story, you go to that link below and download those pictures and open it up. Grab all your pictures and put them in another folder. It's easier to work with. The original folder is a zip folder, so you want to get copy and paste it into another folder so it's easier for you to work with. And just study each picture of that subject for a long time. Zoom around and then think about the dates of that picture. Think about uh, the Fukushima 50 that went and took those pictures and the carnage from the tsunami that came in there that was 50 to 70 feet high. That flooded that entire site. Think about a 50-foot tsunami coming through your neighborhood right now. And then think about a few months later what it would look like when you went back and tried to restore everything. And so that's what you, you know, Fukushima is, uh, that power plant is finished. You can never restart that. There's too much radiation everywhere. Uh, the site was a, a catastrophic event dying to happen. No pun intended because it was built on a fault line in the first place where they get thousands of quakes, sometimes up to 5,000 a year. And they get tsunamis. And where a corporation with shareholders cut corners all over the place, and that when the time came to do something heroic, they got the most vulnerable of society and hid away like cowards and let the victims take the punishment. When they could have brought in the international community who would right now be hard at work at dealing with it realistically. But rather than do that, governments around the world colluded. We had the reports of radioactive fallout right around the entire planet. Uh, unbelievable numbers, particularly California, 20 million liters of becquels, uh, per liter rather, 20 million becquels, disintegrations per second, every second, endlessly. They say iodine-131, turns iodine-132, can't exist without iodine-129. 129 can't exist without uranium plutonium anyway because that's what reactors are run on and right and so all the signatures are there for the people that want to understand or are trying to understand and are willing to go a little bit further and so we have to plow you know push back every single night we have no options but to try not to be a dick every night which I can be sometimes and give people something they can grasp onto and make decisions upon it. And so the big thing you always got to remember is that the, the buildings were 10 stories high, by the way. Uh, but the thing you got to remember, you can do to mitigate things for yourself, uh, is eat healthy. Stay away from genetically modified food, genetically modified pet foods, genetically modified baby foods, genetically modified... Um, Supplements, genetically modified clothing, genetically modified pharmaceuticals, genetically modified, uh, everything in a corner shop is genetically modified, it's not good for you. You can't uptake nutrients and it has toxins in it. And so people need to understand how important it is. They have to change their diet, get everything out of their closet or their cupboards and their fridges as quick as they can and just purge it out of their system. And that some people who can't afford that, it, it, they got to start making difficult choices. But ultimately, they realize uh, some of the things they can do is drink dandelion root tea. And you can pick it yourself. Look for spots where there's not much pesticide ever sprayed. Um, and if you can't do that, you have to look online. But it's a start. Now, an easy start is turmeric, but you have to make sure it's not questionable or contaminated. But 
So go for a good source like health food shops. You can also go to health food shops in big cities. They'll order in DCA if you push them, if you ask them. If you go to your pharmacist and you don't need a prescription, there's no patent on this. It's just that a lot of people don't buy it, but now there's starting to be a bit of a demand for it. But DCA, there's study down below how that can reduce all can cancers by 70% in three weeks. So the smartest thing to do if you're in a position is to start you know, gathering up some of this. Once again, turmeric has 700 peer-reviewed academic studies on this. Uh, and a lot of these are about cancer, how good it is destroying cancer. And another important one you got to remember is structured water. And structured water is stuff that would come out of a mountain or out of a deep spring. And stuff that comes out of your tap is, uh, is contaminated and has been put through machines and it's not structured water anymore. It doesn't... Uh, so water, now you can actually get, you can change water back to its previous structure by just talking to it, and that's been done in scientific experiments, and as bizarre as that might sound to you, that's been done repeatedly in scientific experiments. And uh, they, they know, nobody know they know how it happens, you just don't know why that happens. And so they can actually change water back to structured water. But once again, uh, most of the water on the planet right now has got uh, contaminants into it. You know, the entire northern hemisphere was full of, uh, they done a model for 40 days, 140, uh, 137, which got a 30-year half-life times 10 is 300 years. But uh, whenever you see 137 cesium, which goes right to the muscles, it, there's 10 times or 30 times more strontium, which goes directly into your bones. Uh, so leukemia. And so... The DCA is really good for leukemia to help keep you alive in the sense of DCA, and I should say this is my opinion, talk to your doctors, but DCA, it, it, it unplates the blood, and cancer plates your blood up, binds it all together, and, you know, like creates these dead chunks of cells. But what DCA does, it takes all the cells and separates them. And that's fantastic, that's incredible. But it doesn't hurt... Uh, normal cells and so it's if you do have heavy leukemia this could very well be one of the very few things out there that's uh, got no adverse side effects known whatsoever could really extend and give you back uh, a lot of your health by on on plating your blood and that's what cancer does it plates up your blood and then it starts uh, replicating itself so it stops it from doing that from splitting because Cancer is much like a nuclear reaction, right? It's like uh, splitting the atom. Yeah, that's exactly what it's like, actually, how the cells work. So like the x-rays and the protons, the neutron, neutrons, rather, coming out with two isotopes. Well, that's what cancer does, is it splits and, create, and multiplies and multiplies and multiplies, and DC actually stops that. That's pretty darn cool. There's no patent on it. And there's no money in cures. But there's peer review study down below it of about a, a bunch of other peer review studies done on it that all came up with the same uh, scenario. This is phenomenal. It's not a joke. And that's why I have to keep telling everybody it's so important that everybody has that opportunity to at least know of one reliable, innocuous uh, mineral that is a wonderful thing. And so, structured water works the same way by unplating your blood by your cells, right? And so when you get sick or you have these issues, you your body starts filling up with white blood cells on top of that. And white blood cells displace the oxygen molecule. And so, you you know, you don't have the energy and you start using up your reserve oxygen molecules in your body. And that's why you start feeling down because as the disease progresses, you, you have less and less oxygen molecules because of the white blood cells are displacing all of that. Tobacco does that, alcohol does the same thing. That's how you get uh, drunk, is you displace all your oxygen molecule with uh, the alcohol. And so at some point you feel like you can't drink anymore, and so you stop, because you're so drunk, and then you start feeling good again. That's because you're getting more oxygen molecules into your body. And But the, the water, uh, structured water, which you can get by going, you know, getting drums and filling it up, going out and finding the spring water, looking it up on maps. And, and instead of going out and buying filters for a bottle of water and stuff like that, you buy test kits 
for cyanide and stuff like that where you might find that in natural water. So you test the water to make sure that spring water hasn't got any poison in it because that happens. Not a lot, but it does happen and you don't want to do that. And the money you, you know, some of the money you didn't spend on filters, you now bought kits with and then went out and got containers and then went and got spring water and mountain water. And this water uh, has been shown to have like 40,000 times more energy than tap water. But it has a healing property where it took people that were unbelievably, you know, with degenerative injuries, uh, illnesses, I should say, and their bloods were all plated up. And when they gave them the water, they took a blood sample out of them just before that. They gave them water 10 minutes later, they took another blood sample. They gave them another glass of water 10 minutes later, they took more blood sample. And their blood unpl unplated in that short period of time. And they done this at institutions and universities. It's an unbelievable property about it. And the water where you were born is made up of the very mineral that you are. It's indigenous to your minerals in your body. There's something unique about where you were born. You truly do have a connection to where you were born by the water and the minerals that created you in the first place. That's very significant. That water is better for you than any other water on the planet, as long as it's you know, structured water on top of that would be preferable. And you can get structured water at icebergs just saying, get out there at your last soon, tow one in and hang around with your shotgun and make sure no one steals it on you. <laughs> uh, let me come down to the comment section. Uh, who knows how long I just talked for. Do you like my cover picture where they're burning that lady? You got her off to a ladder and they're going to put her face down on a fire? You don't suppose I was thinking about Tefco with that one, do you? <laughs> Okay, I was. Yeah, I kind of was. I was like, eh, I don't know, I'm going to put up that picture, this picture. And I was looking at that one and said, yeah, I'm going to put up that picture. <laughs> like, boom. I never even resized it. I was like, click. I checked it to make sure it wasn't too small. But <coughs> uh, da -da -da -da, Runaway train. So James was here last night. But we're probably going to have to do a video about Pickering. Eh? Next week we'll do a video. A whole hour. Because that'll get rid of James permanently. Or Gallo, whatever his name is. Ed Ed Gallo, was it? Originally. And he keeps changing his first name to another name. But we'll have to do a video about Pickering, Ontario. I can tear that one apart. Really good. Because it's on a floodplain, right? So they said they got trucks in case there's a problem. They'll bring in the trucks with the pumps. I said the only trolling thing the trucks are going to be doing... Is getting flown away in the flood. At some point, the flood's going to come through that place, and they got they got little uh, flood walls, you know, that comes up to your, your hip or something. <laughs> Good luck. So that plant is going to go down. It's going to take out Lake Ontario, Lake Superior, when it does. That's probably because of the fallout and everything else. Crazy, eh? All of these plants are built to fail. All of these plants are built to self-destruct. All of these plants are built with no idea how to contain it. No concept on how it could, you know. They tell you that they're going to build a sarcophagus, um, you know, a container, right? And put it in the container. Instead, they fire it at a bullet. The A-10 Warthog shoots a ton and a half of that stuff a minute. They, they use it in all kinds of hideous stuff when it's all supposed to be locked up. And they always look at you and they give the TV and the media gets them up there and never calls them on at once. And it's all private investors. That's the sickest, twisted thing imaginable. That your own government allow corporations to do this. Insurance companies won't touch them. So they shouldn't exist. They certainly shouldn't, shouldn't exist in your communities, like that SL1. Oh, you know, 60 kilometers outside the community, no big deal. And then when it goes down, they send up the planes, put out the dosimeters everywhere, they bring in the decontaminating crew. But I thought you just told us that it was out there because there was no danger and you didn't build a containment vessel because it wouldn't pollute anywhere because they were out in the wild. So you release those isotopes into the environment. Uh, it's the, they done that on purpose. That was done on purpose. And so when you hear about high radiation readings at Yellowstone, right? Yellowstone, the big park, 
that's from that's from the releases from the Idaho Falls from the SL1 nuclear meltdown in 61, right? Hey, uh, hi, Mr. Henry for speeds. I'm going to wind down. I just, uh, I'm putting the folder together. Uh, my mom and Ox, 155 watching, no thumbs up. I ain't going to say another word till I get 155 friggin' thumbs up, buddy. Girls, you think I'm kidding? I'll hold my breath. <gasps> Hurry up. I can only last so long. I'm not kidding. Am I turning blue yet? How many thumbs up have I got now, Mama? No more? I better stop talking, I'm gonna run out of here. Okay, you win. I'll take you all on again tomorrow night. You don't scare me, I'll be holding my bread all day tonight, all day tomorrow. I'll be practicing. I'll be practicing. Um, so you got 1,500 buckyballs in California, but everything's fine. You got 20 million Beckwells per liter of rainfall, but everything's fine. You got 14 million Beckwells in the kelp forest, but oh no, University of uh, Berkeley is going to go out and check it themselves later when they get around to it. See, and that's the cover up. To all. Every professor out there is a lobbyist. There's no such thing anymore as an independent professor. You can't. You can't get that tenor. And Wally Springer and Elsevier is going to steal whatever you do anyway. So you're like it's useless. Professors are useless. We should just get rid of them. Give the kids the textbooks, send them home, let them come back and do the test. The professors are hopelessly uh, compromised and useless in all of our universities and institutions. They're the actual issue. They're the, they're, they're holding us back. Uh, they're willing to sell their souls to keep their stupid, idiotic job. And all they're really good at is teaching whatever is in the book anyway. And it's another betrayal of what they're doing to our loved ones and our students and the money we give them for their work. It's not, it doesn't benefit anybody. It gets locked away and they don't open their mouths. They don't stand up. Uh, they don't deserve our respect. And there's, you know, I'm sure there's some good people out there, but they compromised themselves so long ago that a guilty conscience don't quite work that way for me. Just because they got a guilty conscience and they got away with it, and now they want to try to seem like the good guy, I can't trust those people. I have no intentions of ever putting any faith in what they say. Yeah, and uh, told Bikini Islands, you should really, anybody don't know any better, think sterile, anybody don't know about that, they should go out and watch some of the documentaries up on Talk and Stick TV. They got some really good ones about that. Talk and Stick TV, and I hear on YouTube, go watch that. Go type into uh, Toll Bikini Islands or something like that, and you'll you'll find some pretty wild. You see how demented the Americans are. Hi, Laurie. No, is the real prize and all this? Fred, I don't know. Turn purple. I almost did. I was working at it. I'll do it again tomorrow. I'm gonna practice night talk. I'm gonna cheat and get a take of oxygen. I'm just gonna breathe oxygen for like a half an hour for a get on here. So my whole body's full of oxygen. I bet you I last like 60 seconds. Ooh, somebody thumbed down. How can you fear monger a life ending event? Yeah, no kidding, eh? I'll work on it though. Uh, Mama, Mama, Knox, troll alert. I don't care. I, I screen capture what they got to say anyway. Right? I screen capture what they say and it all goes into a foil. At some point I'll get around to that foil. Like bananas, like rocks, like the ocean. I can fill the room up with bananas. Can't hurt me unless they all fall on me or something or worse. But if I had a piece of uranium plutonium the size of that banana or the yellow cake to 238 uranium 238 or the iodine 129 um, I couldn't finish the sentence and it would never get my body back uh, and that same piece of uranium the size of banana will kill everybody on the planet if you 
were to pass it to him for a few moments and they pass it to somebody else, yeah, you would kill everybody on the planet with this piece of uh, uranium sized banana, but a banana can't kill you that I know about. You can fill the whole building up, literally your entire life, you can't get cancer from that. You can take baths in ocean water with natural uranium all day long, can't hurt you. But if you took uranium-238, one of the bullets they fired in Iraq and Afghanistan, 2.25 million a month for nine years, from McAllister's bomb manufacturer, McAllister, Oklahoma, you would die before you probably got into the bathroom with salt, let alone the bathtub. But you can take a bath in, in salt water with natural uranium, because everything got natural uranium, natural plutonium, natural... This stuff doesn't matter. It's not part of the equation. You won't find it in E equals MC squared. Throw in a banana and a few rocks, some salt water from the ocean. Turn the key. Give it a kickstart. But they want to introduce those that kind of language and that kind of uh, dialect in order to make you uh, doubt something or to confuse you or just to misrepresent it. And so I don't do that. I, don't, I won't do stuff like that. I make fun of it. I, uh, if I can find a troll, I'll, I'll go aboard of him before I end the show. And let's, let's end it with a bang. Why not? Where's your toe? Come here, little troll. The data's looking for you. You can't hold much longer. You're here somewhere. Oh, it's going to be bad. I'll find you. Hang on. Take your sink, William. Let me see, I'll find you. If there's a troll here, I'll find you. I'll tear your friggin' head off. Where you too, buddy? Come on. I can't find him. I don't know. Yeah, thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Ham. Thanks, Troy, Pam, DC. I guess I have to get him next time. Nuts for Art. Ketzer, Sydney. Yeah, uh, Sylvia, I'll come and catch everybody's comments after. Starlight, Fred, Earl, Annabeck. Let me see if I can catch a few. How is passenger traffic via airlines to Hanshiro being handled nowadays, especially after the Ronald Reagan incident is finally coming to light? What the hell has that got to do with this? The Real Night Rider, Pam, David. I say hi to a few people before I go for the night. And standing foot. I'll catch him on both screens. Snoop. Snoop. I have a hard time. Stacy Anderson. Penny Miller. Just passing through. Oh, DC. We got Sydney. I'm so bad. Mickey. Stenson. David. I got a few that time. Uh, Mr. Hemi. 967 Pasha Joyce Hi Joyce Miss Milky the Clown Yay Hi Missy Um Mom and Ox says troller Maybe I'll find him before I go offline here I can have a bit of fun Will you too? I'll find you I'm on your trail Hi Aqua Hang on folks Lori I can't find a troll. It's not fair. It's not right. What did I do wrong? Why is it always me when I can't find a freaking troll? A troll changed his mind and made a thumbs up? What? I was ready. Sorry. I wanted to go. I wanted to throw down. Freaking not right. <laughs> Well, maybe I made a few TEPCO employees cry. They would just put a video up and say, Dana made me cry. I think we all enjoy that. <laughs> but anyway, hi, Atom. Atom Truty Full. Huma. John Smith. Death of a Troll. Laurie Fort. Reman. Hi, Laurie. I haven't got a chance to say hi, so I say hi to you actually. Like Marcus. Stacy sends me a smile. I find a few people. This thing is rolling, rolling, rolling. Somebody said Dana. Who, who said Dana? Look at Dana coming on full time every night for 90 days. And you folks are here to support me all the time. And next week will be a lot of fun too because. 
into the new studio. That's going to take a little bit of work to figure out. But uh, I was there today, got five gallons of green paint. Well, what is Dana planning with green paint, I wonder, in the studio? Yeah, so there's some really fun stuff coming up, I guess, if you want to call it fun. Some really, like we're going, uh, we're we're going to be getting busy on these uh, freaks cases now. I got so much, and I need a whole new setup, a whole new system. I got to burn through a lot of stuff and get it organized and be able to use it. And I think I got that worked out too, and so that's coming not right away, but that's coming. Where I'll be have pictures and pictures and streaming videos and be able to import people in. Where you'll be able to participate by sending me. And so start practicing now and go out and take pictures, right? 360 degree, take pictures above you and take pictures around uh, uh, down to 360. And then put them all in a folder, right? And then I'm going to be asking you to send me that folder. And so when you send it to me, that's going to get stitched together, and that's going to be my 3D studio, and I'll be able to pan through that entire studio. Pretty friggin' cool! Ha ha ha! You know I can get up to some really naughty stuff with that kind of routine. and But I can do that in like 30 seconds. So I can be talking to you, and you can say, Hey Dana, I just sent you one. I can import that, and 30 seconds later that will become my environment. 100%. I can, I can actually move around in the environment. Very cool stuff coming up. Very cool stuff. Better than Fox. Oh, yeah, Ben. And I'll have to put in some just amazing amount of work to get the kinks out of that one. You think I had a hard time with the audio for 90 days? Wait till you see me trying to work through that one. <laughs> but I already done a lot of pre-research on this stuff. I've been drooling trying to get my hands on it. But that means I got to get a couple of thousand dollars worth of lights and diffusers. That means I got to get some serious, like 30 million pixel cameras. So I got I got to put together something really, and I'm going to because that's the only way we're going to beat these, is to put out stuff that's so much fun, and so informative, and so <laughs> whacked that you can't help but uh, get informed no matter how little of you watched. That's the that's the idea, but also allows. People to send me all uh, pictures, right? So you can go out and find a perfect scenery for, and in the last moment, be able to send it off and still stitch it together. Very, very cool stuff. No, that's why I'm going to do it that way, Miss Milky. That way I'll be able to bring in as many as I want and import them into the, into the, fic, you know, the fictional studio at the same time. Just like they're right here with me. You won't know any difference. We'll be sitting at a desk alongside of each other, yet we're somewhere else. And because I can't seem to do it with this scenario I got here, but the other one uh, is ten thousand, just for the setup, not counting the lights and the cameras. But that's what I'm shooting for. And so, first, first off, we just got uh, the high-speed net hooked up yesterday. The phones hooked up today, there. And so we're once I get up to a certain stage, then when I start sharing it with you, then we'll be able to give you all of that stuff too, right? And then we'll be able to call people up and do it through the telephones or do it through Google and just incorporate them all in. Because this is, you know, this is okay, but I got to go a, a whole, whole nother level, right? And of course, all that will be Creative Commons for everybody. And, but it'll, it'll also be something that um, you can't, when I say building four, you'll see building four like you've never seen it. And so I'll be able to just really rip that apart, and then people can just take like a 30 second clip, see, and destroy narratives. Because that's what it'll be all about, taking the narratives. And I'll be trying to contact those people. I'll give them a chance to come online. And so, uh, didn't mean to tell everybody that tonight, but it's probably okay, because I'm pretty excited about it. And the idea is to give everybody the opportunity before we shred them with the hounds of Fukushima. <laughs> Dana and the hounds of Fukushima. That is, I, I really, you know, for some reason I like that. I don't know why that appeals to me so much, but Dana and the Hounds of Fukushima, just, there's something about it. Every time I tell my friends about it, I say, oh yeah, they better watch your ass or Dana and the Hounds of Fukushima are going to get on their case. <laughs> my, my friends, whoever I mention to, always starts laughing because they kind of realize anyway what I'm like, so 
Sweet indeed. Okay, folks. That was a lot longer, uh, but at least we all got a good note. We know what's coming up in the near future. Is we're gonna take it to the to a level they ain't even can't even imagine, because that's what we gotta do. We got no options. We got no choice. They're forcing us. If Japan would deal with it, I wouldn't have to do it. You wouldn't have to do it. We all wouldn't have to do anything, and we can't restore that fate, unfortunately. And so we, you know, it's time to it's time to really shove it back really good. So there's no way anybody can misinterpret anything, and I'm I'm intending to do it. I don't care what everybody else does out there that I don't know about. I'm going to make sure at least I do my side. My I give it my best. Period. So we'll see you tomorrow night with some more cool stuff. We made it to an hour. Told you I could talk when I want to, didn't I? <laughs> I had to tell you all the good stuff anyway, so because I knew that would make everybody feel a bit better. And we'll have the guitar there all the time, too, so we'll start using music lots and lots and lots, just for a bit of fun. Okay, well, we'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Take care, and thank you again, you know. I'm always, uh, it's much better with you than it is without you. Make no mistake about it, and I appreciate it. We'll read your comments after, and we'll see you tomorrow night. That's a fact.